done with all of our equations like this, let's start with the simplest examples, okay? So apply the logic that we've been doing. When we've had exponential equations or when we've had log equations and we've had a log on both sides, what did we do? We, okay, it's kind of like they cancel. We just set what was inside the logs equal to each other. Okay, same thing's going to happen here. If we have a square root of something equal to the square root of something else, the only way that's going to happen is if what's under those square roots are equal to each other, okay? Now, you could also look at it from the perspective of if I'm trying to get rid of a square root, then I'm going to square both sides of the equation. Squaring a square root cancels it. So either way you look at it, we end up with what's under the square root. We set those pieces equal to each other, and now it's just a linear equation, okay? Add 9n to both sides, so we get 17n plus 8 is equal to 8. Subtract 8 from both sides, we get 17n is equal to 0. Divide by 17, so n is 0. You can check it really easy. Plug it back in. If n is 0, we get the square root of 8 on the left side. If n is 0, we get the square root of 8 on the right side. Easy enough, right? Okay, so similar problem here, set v minus 1 equal to 21 minus v. Be careful with this. These can be a little tricky. They look really simple, but a lot of people mess up the signs. Add v to both sides, so we get 2v minus 1 equals 21. Add 1 to both sides, so 2v equals 22. Divide by 2, v equals 11. Do a quick check, 11 minus 1 is 10, square root of 10 on the left side, 21 minus 11 is 10, square root of 10 on the right side. Okay. Now, what happens if we don't have a square root on both sides? Well, we don't set it equal to 0, okay? This is why I pointed out the squaring thing. We gotta get rid of the square root. The variable's under the square root, so we've gotta get it out of there. So we've gotta square it. Well, if you square one side, you gotta square the other side. So we've got 11 squared, which is 121, is equal to 61v minus 1. So add 1, we get 122 is equal to 61v. Divide by 61. 2 is equal to v. Check it. 61 times 2 is 122. Minus 1 is 121. Square root of 121 is 11. Okay. Now, most of the time, though, we don't just have a plain square root. Usually, there's something in front of it or behind it or whatever. We don't have just a plain square root. So, you've got to, you have to isolate the square root first before you square both sides. So here we've got to divide both sides by 8. Negative 8, excuse me. So we've got the square root of 20v is equal to positive 10. Now we square both sides. So we get 20v is equal to 100. Divide by 20. v is equal to 5. You can check it very easily. 20 times 5 is 100. Square root of 100 is 10. 10 times negative 8 is negative 8. Okay? Now, I didn't provide an example like this, but if that were not negative 8 times the square root, if that were negative 8 plus the square root of 20v, how would that change the problem? Right. Be careful. We would 